Hi there, so uh, welcome to lecture six. Uh, and this is uh, this first video is about linear regression. Uh, the second one's about an example. And uh, very often when we're doing science, we'll think about, uh, we'll try and uh, arrange matters such that we can plot uh, our data in a form that will give us a, a linear function, that is a straight line. So we'll uh, manipulate the um, equation such that we can end up plotting a line um, and the gradient of the line and the intercept might be some correspond to some physical constants or something. And we're using that to try and measure those constants or to confirm some hypothesis that uh, this sort of linear relationship should be obeyed if we plot the data in a, uh, an appropriate format or something like that. Um, and when we are trying to find our straight line and our intercept then, um, we would ask ourselves, well, you know, which line is it? If I look at this data, the first step is always to plot the data, actually, and ask yourself, does it, does it look like it's doing the right sort of thing? And then if you think it is, then you go ahead and go through a statistical procedure, which we're about to go through, on finding out what the line is. And the question is, you know, is it that gradient or that gradient or that gradient, or should it be up there or down there? What exactly is the best fit? And we want to do a bit better than doing it by eye. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to think about how to do that in a statistical manner called linear regression. Um, so, and we'll start out with the simplest case um, where we'll assume that the data are all equally reliable or unreliable. That is, the uncertainty on each of the data points is the same. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a, an equation of the form y equals mx plus c. Here I've got my stresses y, uh, my strains x, and by convention on the horizontal axis x, we put the thing that we're varying, the thing that we control precisely, and y is what we measure in response to that control parameter. So y is our vertical axis, and that's convention in science. Um, and uh, the physical constants here would be our gradient m and our intercept c. And our question is, where are they going to, to lie? It looks like c somewhere close to zero here, um, but we don't know exactly where. Um, and we're going to attempt to find that out. Um, and as we've said before, if we've got um, some Arrhenius function, you know, a e to the minus q over rt, y equals, we could take logs, log y equals log a. Uh, minus q over rt, and then we could plot um, 1 over t, uh, so we could say log a minus q over r times 1 over t. We identify that as our x, log y as our vertical axis, then the intercept would be log a, and the gradient would be q over r. Um, so we can do this for all sorts of physical problems. Um, there are some problems which we'll come on to in the next lecture. Um, but let's roll with it for now. Um, and the standard method for doing this is called a least squares minimization, and we'll see what, uh, what that means. So if we assume that we can find M and C, we can then compute for each. So we've got a, a bunch of data in XI, YI pairs um, for I equals 1 through to N. Those are all our data. And for each data point, we can define a residual SI as being the deviation of the measured Y from the predicted Y, if you like, so M XI uh, plus C. So if we had a straight line, um, let's assume that we can find out what it is. If we have a straight line on here, badoom. then each of our residuals here is going to be that value s, that's a value of s for that point, that's a value s for that point, and so on and so on. Those are all the s's there. And you can see, and if we hypothesize that they're going to be normally distributed, we can go ahead and do some statistics. So that would be our c there, this would be our gradient m. So that's s. And Legendre, in 1806, a French guy, um, said that the best value of M and C will be those for which the sum of the squares of S's um, will be a minimum. So we find big S as being 
the sum over all i of the individual s's y minus m x i minus c. Um, and uh, we want to do that for the squares because we want something that's just below and just above not to cancel out but to add. They're both bad and we want to optimize m and c such that we minimize this overall fitness metric or goodness of fit or chi squared we'll come on to call it s. Um, now the question is how do we then find m and c? Well um, we imagine some response surface such that um, m and c how m and c vary, uh, sorry, how s varies with m and c. So if I made m a bit bigger, what would s do? So I imagine um, as I vary m, what happens to s? There would be some curve like this, say, and as I varied c, I'd have some s, um, and it might do something like that, say, and it would actually be an overall surface. So let's try and plot that out. We'd have some surface where we've got m varying, c varying, S, and we'd have some sort of hull here describing how M and C vary, um, uh, how S varies as we vary M and C. And we want to find the global minimum um, at which S is minimized, and that would then be the optimum value of M and C, the optimum fit. So how do we find that minimum? Well, uh, it turns out for a straight line we can do it exactly. We can differentiate uh, and set to zero. So we say ds by dm, when that zero will have found the turning point. And it turns out for straight line there is only one, so it's quite nice. Um, there is only one minimum. Um, and so if we want to differentiate that, well, don't worry about the sum. Everything differentiates in the normal sort of way. Um, so that's equal to um, 2 um, uh, we, when we multiply this out, we've got to do 2 and then we differentiate the bracket, so that gives us a minus m when we do it, well, minus x with respect to m. And then we're going to get uh, yi minus mxi minus c. And we have to do a sum of all of that over all i. Um, so that's our equation for um, m. And we can do the same thing for c, ds by dc. And that's going to be a bit simpler because there's no differential here. So that's when we set that to zero, we'll get um, an equation that is, uh, we'll still get the, mi the minus sign from the c, we'll still get the 2 from the squared, and we'll get uh, just the contents of the bracket. And then we'll have our sum. Um, and then we've just got to solve that. So. One thing is, if I take this e expression for C, so this is equation 6.4 in the notes, and this is equation 6.5. If I take 6.5, I can find for C that I've got the minus 2 will cancel out, so I just have this sum. So I'll have my equation that I can bring my C out because it's not part of the sum. I'll just get an N when I do this from I equals 1 to N. I'll get NCs when I pull it out of the bracket. And I can say that that's going to be equal to the sum of all the YIs. So that's Y bar. Um, and let's go a bit slower. CN is equal to the sum of all the YIs minus M times the sum of all the XIs. But the sum of all the YIs is the average of them times N. So I've got Y bar N and minus m x bar n here. And then the n's will cancel. And I'll end up with the result c is equal to y bar minus m times x bar. So that's nice. Um, now, um, so c is actually at the center of gravity here, minus some y bar. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, so we found c. And then we can insert our equation for C into our equation for M. So if I take equation 6.4, I've got 0 is equal to um, the sum of the x, i, y, i's um, there. Uh, I'm taking the minus sign and the 2 away. 
and then I've got minus m times the sum of the xi squareds uh, minus a sum of the c's. That's my equation for that. Um, but my equation for, and that's going to be just equal to c times n. Um, ah, ba -ba 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 ah, no, sorry. Ah. Minus c, sorry, I should follow through, c times xi. Okay, right. Now, um, I can say, if I uh, rearrange this equation, I can pull those two over there and say that. So I've got sum of c times the sum of xi, because c is just a constant, plus m times the sum of xi squareds is equal to the sum of xi yi which is going to be my covariance. Um, now, I can substitute for C here. So I'm going to have to do a bit, little bit of rubbing out. So I'm going to rub that out there. Um, and I'm going to, um, so if I come over here, I'll take C as being Y bar minus M X bar um, times the sum of my X's there, um, plus m times my sum of my x squared is equal to sum of x y. Okay, very good. Now, if I collect the m terms together, I've got m times the sum of x squared um, minus And this is just x bar times n, so I've got x bar squared times n. Okay. Um, and I'm going to bring that over the other side. So I've got my sum of x, y here. And then I've got to bring my sum of x times y bar, which is x bar n times y bar. And I've got to bring it over, so that's minus x bar y bar times n. Okay, so to find m I just have to bring that down. So I've now got m is equal to sum of x i y i, don't know what that is, minus x bar y bar n, divided by the sum of x squared minus x bar squared n. Okay, very good. Um, and uh, now I can just say, I can pull that back into the bracket. When I pull it into the sum, I lose the n. Um, so that's uh, do, 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 do. Um, x bar squared n. So that's that. And I can also then say that m is equal to the sum of <coughs> x minus x bar y, and again pulling the n in, divided by the sum of x bar minus x bar all squared. Um, and that will work out as well. And that's my equation for m. This is, last bit's a little bit tricky, but believe me, it works out if you spend the time. So we've got our equations for M and for C, and hurrah, we're over, we're done. We've got our, our answer for M and C, and we can find it straightforwardly and analytically. We just have to find uh, the sum of uh, X, oops, put my eyes in again, um, just for clarity. Um, I just have to find my sum of X minus X bar, so the deviations of X from the average, uh, times the y's, divided by the sum of the deviations of x's by the average squared. Um, now, the other thing we want to do is estimate the error in m and c. So I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit, little bit of tidy up here and get our uh, results. So if I do, um, uh, if I wipe these all off, And I'm going to write, that, write these guys down in blue. 
So I've got C is equal to Y bar minus M times the average of X. Um, and M is equal to a slightly more complicated equation, the sum of the XI's minus X bar times Y, sum over I, divided by the sum over I of X minus X bar all squared. Um, now, the other thing we want to do is find the error, the uncertainty in M and C. Um, and that's a bit complicated. If you want the derivation, it's in um, Appendix C of Squires. Um, but uh, first we want to do is find, define D as being the sum of the xi minus x bars all squared. That is that guy, is D. Um, and then we've got, uh, and then we can say the uncertainty in M squared is equal to big S divided by D times N minus 2. And now we know M, we can put it in there, find big S. Um, and the uncertainty in C squared is equal to D over N plus X bar times the uncertainty in M squared. Okay, so that's worth a comment. Now, C down here, the more uncertain we are about M, I'll get my ruler, the more uncertain we are about M, the more uncertain we're going to be about C. Really, we can think of this line as pivoting about a point, and I just need to find out where that point is. It's there. And that point is x bar comma y bar. So really, this straight line as we change m will pivot around the mean. So really we want to actually recast this equation as being y, we've written it at the moment as being y equals m plus or minus the uncertainty in m times x plus uh, c plus or minus the uncertainty in c. But because it really it pivots around that, really we'd like an equation that is y equals m plus or minus the uncertainty in m times x minus x bar oops, plus another constant b plus or minus the uncertainty in b where b is this value here, y bar. Um, and that's, that would then mean that y, what, b moved up the thing up and down and m pivoted it. And if we do that, um, then we would get an expression for, so b itself is equal to y bar, just the average there. And then the uncertainty in b squared is equal to s over n, n minus 2 and doesn't include any, uh, any term for m. So that's it. That's all you need for linear regression, is you need these guys, um, and then you can find c plus or minus its uncertainty, m and its uncertainty, and that's it, done. All solved analytically, very nicely. And we can uh, do that, code it up in a spreadsheet, and solve a problem. And actually, we're going to solve it for this data here, which we'll do in the uh, second video. Um, so that's linear regression. Um, very simple, all there is to it. And the nice thing is you get an uncertainty estimate for the gradient and for the intercept. And that's the thing that we really want if we're trying to figure out if our experiment is accurate enough for our purpose, if we wanted to estimate these physical constants, whatever they are. So that's it for this video.